This is one of the most recognizable monuments in India. The Charminar, built by the Sultan Kuli Qutub Shah and representing a phase of the city's history from the 17th century. This city was also the capital of the Nizams of Hyderabad who lorded over the largest princely state in India. The city reflects layers of history going much further back. Sadly, much of it is in danger. Most of the sites are not officially documented or registered as heritage and the official heritage list of protected structures itself was wiped clean in 2014. Since then, all we hear is of the attempt to bulldoze the past. We find out what's happening. These are old pictures of Hyderabad taken by the noted photographer Raja Deen Dayal at the beginning of the 20th century. But the Hyderabad of today is very different. Office complexes, car parks, flyovers and development which is great and shows the strides the city has taken. But it has come at a great cost, irrevocably changing the fabric of the city as historian and co-convener of Hyderabad intact. Mr. Sajjad Shahid tells us. Change is inevitable, but some changes are traumatic. The environment around you, be it the built environment or the natural environment, is a marker around which your identity develops. So when you lose that, when you lose those markers, it hurts you a lot. But change is inevitable. Uh, some things can change and should change. Some things should remain because those are markers of identity, markers of your being. Uh, so that is what I feel is lost. There are times at which I am lost in my own city because the markers which were reference points, uh, subconsciously I realized I was at a certain place or passing through a certain locality. Because of the environment around me, that has changed. So that has been the most dramatic change, I think. Cyberabad, the high-tech city, has made Hyderabad a draw for IT companies around the world. But it is also emblematic of the problems facing Hyderabad's historic and cultural heritage. For at the very spot where Cyberabad stands stood a Qutub Shahi era lake that was known for its clear water as early as the 1980s. The IT boom, the real estate development that happened, you know, that was at a maddening pace and uh, by and large it was unplanned. No one gave a second thought to what was happening. They wanted to create spaces to how these IT, uh, you know, sector and they went about, you know, laying roads and uh, uh, constructing buildings and infrastructure without realizing uh, the impact that, would, it, that it would have on the environment. Like before uh, the present uh, Cyberabad or the new area that came there uh, developed, you had a beautiful lake there which was uh, uh, called the secret lake by some, Durgam Cheru by others. It was a, a historic lake dating from Khudubshai times. It was the secret lake which supplied water to the Khudubshai. And re it remained pristine and clear. The water was drinkable till the early 80s. Um, after that, slowly deterioration started because development started in that area and then, of course, it was so rapid that uh, the entire area was uh, developed without planning a uh, sewage disposal system and with the end result that sewage started flowing into the, the lake and it is all gone now. It's a cesspool like many other lakes in the city. The roots of this general apathy go far back to the 1960s and 70s when many of the iconic Hyderabadi buildings such as the Bashir Bagh Palace and the Diwan Devri Palace of the Salar Jungs were demolished. The Urban Land Sealing Act of 1976 led the first wave of destruction of Hyderabadi buildings. Over decades, palaces, tombs, gardens and lakes all fell prey to creeping urbanization. When it became the capital of Andhra Pradesh, uh, people who were, uh, who, who were alien to the culture and who didn't know about the culture of Hyderabad uh, were in power. 
they thought they were doing what was uh, best according to them and that was not what was uh, good for hyderabad you know they were bringing in uh, ideas which had not worked here which had worked somewhere else so that was the root of the problem and then you have a lot of other things coming in like urban land sealing was i think majorly responsible for destruction of of the mansions of hyderabad the spacious uh, uh, palaces that had remained people were forced to um, subdivide those even houses villas in in banjara hills had to be subdivided because of urban land sealing so this was all a crazy thing happening uh, basically uh, there was also i think uh, a lack of response from the people of hyderabad because uh, they were never part of the decision making process although they were the main stakeholders in the city they were never consulted they were never part of the decision making process with the end result uh, that whatever happened was uh, something alien to the culture that they were used to like before uh, um, uh, 1950s when uh, andhra pradesh was formed the general uh, layout of a hyderabadi house would be would have a, uh, necessarily an internal courtyard that was an integral part of planning in hyderabad suddenly you know new laws came in when you had this setback rule coming in and you had to leave uh, space from your boundaries and uh, the first thing that was sacrificed was the internal open space which was a cultural space which was a space integral to the lifestyle to the social setup of hyderabad there are hundreds of localities in hyderabad which are still called bagh there is no bagh there all those were gone because of this uh, i think a really stupid rule of uh, urban land sealing which was imposed without giving thought to what consequences that it would have on the city there was a subsequent loss of green cover there was a, a major change in environment thanks to the efforts of heritage activists in the early 90s hyderabad was the second city in india after mumbai to implement its own heritage regulations between the years 1994 and 95 and a heritage conservation committee was formed in 1996 with the formation of telangana state in 2014 it was hoped that the new state government would lead to renewed interest in heritage protection in the city telangana movement of course there were hopes that things would change but unfortunately whatever gains had been made during earlier regime and they were very uh, landmark uh, successes i i should say because um, hyderabad was the second city after mumbai to have uh, city uh, level heritage laws despite that um, the hope that we had that after uh, the formation of telangana more importance will be given to culture and heritage that was somehow i think misplaced Uh, because the understanding of culture and heritage of the uh, present political dispensation uh, uh, needs a lot you know leaves a lot to be said about uh, it's very selective uh, generally i think there's no idea of uh, what constitutes heritage the government at one point had already struck stricken down the entire list of heritage buildings and they you know started restoring uh, things on their own without any proper methodology being adopted or the set procedures being adopted and uh, i i don't know for some reason um, uh, the cm says that uh, usman ali khan was a very great uh, um, nizam he did a lot for this he says all that but when it comes to the iconic uh, usmania general hospital he is hell bent on demolishing it same goes for era manzil you have a uh, civil society had to fight a case uh, and get an order from the high court otherwise there was no protected list in other no list of heritage buildings no heritage building at, at all according to the telangana government uh, it was the high court which said that regulation 13 continues to be in effect and the heritage list continues be, to be in effect but what has happened nothing after that the government has not taken any action positive action in either safeguarding restoring or uh, you know following uh, the rules laid out by regulation 13 we still do not have a heritage committee as per regulation 13 of hmda and we have a, a farcical 
committee, heritage committee constituted by, by the government under a, a new act, uh, Heritage Act, which itself has a lot of problems. In 2017, the government of Telangana passed Telangana Heritage Conservation Act. The heritage activists opposed this law as there was no accompanying list of monuments and structures to be protected under it. The lack of clarity also meant that all heritage structures were under threat. The law also mandates the formation of three levels of heritage committees, the Telangana State Heritage Authority, the Greater Hyderabad Heritage Authority and a District Heritage Authority for each district. A heritage committee for Hyderabad city still hasn't been constituted. The heritage committee has not been formed. What has been formed is a committee under the Telangana Heritage Act, the new act. Uh, that's a different issue. That has nothing to do with the city level heritage committee that is still, you know, valid. It still has to be constituted according to the decision of the High Court in the Iramanzil case. Iramanzil case, the court ruled that Regulation 13, is, which was struck down by the government, was wrong, and it has uh, the striking down was wrong, and it has been reinstated with full force, with full effect, from the date in, on which it was struck down. So those 150 buildings are still on the list, whereas the list, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the committee that was constituted by the government under the Telangana Heritage Act, it does not have a single building. The list is blank as far as Hyderabad Heritage is concerned. So we are going by what the ruling of the High Court. The government is in contempt of court if it is saying that it has formed a committee because it has not formed the committee as per the bylaws of Regulation 13. One of the biggest issues faced by Hyderabad's heritage buildings is that a large number of them are privately owned buildings, including the King Koti Palace, which was in the news recently for its partial demolition. This palace was built in the late 19th century and served as the residence of Mir Osman Ali Khan, the last Nizam of Hyderabad. The problem lies in the implementation of incentives for the owner of such buildings. The heritage rules are clear. The, anyone can own a, own a building. It is, if it is important enough for the city to be declared a heritage building, it will be a heritage building. It can be sold. People can buy it. It can be private. It can be acquired by the government if the government wants to and if it feels it is so important. But you can be the owner of a heritage building and you will have to uh, you know, keep it as it was. Th that rule is very clear. Now. There were incentives that should have been given that were offered at one time, but it didn't work out. So uh, it was, I think, up to the government to work out systems by which people would be encouraged, private owners would be encouraged to uh, maintain and to keep the heritage buildings. Instead of that, you have been penalizing them, you have been doing all sorts of things. So that is what is negative. And then you have, you know, uh, you give what was called a transferable development right, which worked in other cities. It didn't work in Hyderabad because the government repeatedly, every few years, brings about regularization schemes where any violation can be regular, regularized. Earlier, it was the, the, there was a proposal that if there is a uh, you know deviation in some building which can be allowed, then uh, the compensation was for that should go to the heritage building owners. So the, their te transferable development rights should be sold to these people or these people should buy them. And that is how it would generate income and it would compensate the owners of heritage building. Nothing of that sort had, has happened. You have not even uh, waived the municipal taxes on these buildings. So where is the incentive for private owners? The will to protect the will to safeguard heritage on the part of the government and its agencies is lacking. That is the main problem. One building which is facing a threat of demolition is Hyderabad's iconic Indo-Saracenic style Osmania General Hospital. Built in 1919 by Mir Osman Ali Khan, journalist and heritage enthusiast Yunus Lasania 
has been taking people on heritage walks around the old city. He explains the historic importance of the building and how it forms an intrinsic part of Hyderabad's cityscape. Currently, there's a case in the High Court where a bunch of people want the Usmania Hospital to be demolished. Usmania Hospital is one of the most important hospitals because uh, not only is it a modern allopathic hospital built under the last Nizam in Hyderabad as part of the city's modernization, before the hospital existed, there was an, a much older hospital on which on the same place called the Afzal Ganj Hospital where they carried out something what we call as the chloroform commission where uh, under the sixth Nizam, the last Nizam's father, you had the chloroform commission where they actually used chloroform as to t where they actually tested chloroform as anesthesia anywhere in the world for the first time, I think in 1888. So the hospital has immense significance and Usmania Hospital was one of the most advanced hospitals of its time. Uh, also it was designed by Vincent Esch and to suddenly hear the state government saying that yeah, it's, we don't want this building, it has to go is just unthinkable. The Usmania General Hospital is one of the largest government hospitals in Telangana and a lifeline to the residents of the old city. The proponents of its demolition, including the local member of parliament, Mr. Asaduddin Oesi, have claimed that the old building is unsuitable for a modern state-of-the-art hospital and so must be torn down and replaced with a modern building. But Mr. Shahid explains, demolition is not the only solution. Uh, more than 10 years back, it was already decided. The Heritage Committee debated the issue. They said they will allow a new block to come up behind the heritage building and it was all possible. Uh, a competent, uh, qualified conservation architect, I think it was Suriran Murthy who made a presentation. His plans were approved by the health department and the government. Suddenly there was a U-turn and the reason is unknown. Uh, why, why, why this, uh, you know, obsession with demolishing the old heritage building? It is not just buildings which are under threat. These unique rocks found all over Hyderabad are over 2.5 billion years old. For centuries, people have built structures and houses around it. The most notable among them are the Golconda Fort and the shrine of Mola Ali. But now, Real estate developers are just blasting through these rocks to build their buildings. Frock Kadar is an environmental activist who has been working on the cause of saving these rock formations through the Society to Save Rocks. She explains how just raising awareness among the local people is so important who just take these rocks for granted as a part of the landscape. The destruction is everywhere, especially now in the new suburbs of Hyderabad, which have come up in very rocky areas. Um, that is mainly the buildings, uh, the building of new colonies, new houses, and um, the, the need for building space in, in the city or around the city, because the city as all Indian cities is expanding very rapidly, and so the, the main threat is the, the, um, the need for building space. And uh, we have tried to make people aware that they can use at least some of the landscape, the rocky landscape, for um, some nature around their buildings or inside their buildings. But um, as I said, it costs something and usually they don't do it. What we have to do is make people aware that we have these rocks. Because in Hyderabad, you know, people have grown up with the rocks, they don't really see them anymore. They don't realize that this is a piece of nature that should not be done away with. Only when the rock is gone, then they realize that it is gone. So we started awareness programs and we started with the children, um, a children's painting competition and then we had a photo competition then we have a painter's workshop. Uh, some famous painters came to Hyderabad. They all had to paint rocky pictures, which they did. And, um, and from, from then it took off and we started working with the government. We formed the society in 1996, uh, officially, formally. 
a registered society. I think we have brought some awareness to the people of Hyderabad. At least I have the feeling that they know more about it. The builders know about it. The architects know about it. The government knows about it. Now the implementation is, of course, takes another effort by all of them. But amid doom and gloom, there are also some positive successes in conservation as well. The most notable being the Qutub Shahi tombs near Golconda, which were restored with the help of the Aga Khan Trust and the recent restoration of the British Residency Building. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in both cases, the funding, uh, at least a, a major part of it, uh, came from outside the city. Uh, Tombs, of course, the Aga Khan uh, Trust for Culture, with uh, quite a few donors, uh, and uh, the residency, uh, the primary work was being done by the by funds received from the World Monument Fund. So, where, where are the people of Hyderabad? Where are the businesses of Hyderabad? Where are the corporates of Hyderabad who should be spending as, as at least the CSR um, funds that they have on the heritage of Hyderabad? That has not happened. I hope that people start realizing that it, it can be done, these things can be done. As far as the Qutub Shai tombs are concerned and of course the residency itself, uh, I happen to be associated with both projects uh, at the residency. It was mainly uh, the late uh, uh, Bilkhi Salahuddin. Uh, of course, uh, William Dandrempel played a major role in bringing focus to the plight of the building. Then there were a lot of other people uh, who finally put it on the uh, list of uh, World Monuments Fund. And then, of course, WMF came up with the initial grant for documentation and then eventually we have at least the central block, the Darbar all now conserved and preserved. Khutub uh, Shai tombs, of course, it's a commitment by the Akhan Trust for Culture. They've been doing a lot of work in other places too. In Delhi, they have done an excellent job and they are repeating that in Hyderabad and they are committed and of course, they have also taken on quite a few other uh, sites in Hyderabad. Now, uh, they are doing uh, some work on um, the Payaga tombs, on the Bashai Ashokana, but how long is the Goya city uh, and its heritage going to depend on uh, outsiders to support them? While on one hand, the heritage movement is facing government apathy, there is a silver lining to this dark cloud. In increasing numbers, the local people of Hyderabad are getting aware of the heritage and participating in the heritage movement, something which makes veteran heritage activists like Mr. Sajjad Shahid quite optimistic. People have now started you know, uh, realizing the importance of heritage more than the, they did about 25 years back. I think the, uh, we fought a long, long battle and it succeeded finally in 1995-96 when we had the uh, Regulation 13 coming about and uh, the 150, 160 buildings uh, being declared. Now people are talking about precincts, which were all, also there, about water bodies, uh, about uh, rock formations. Um, all this happened because of a, a, a sustained campaign that was carried out by INTAC and of course later by a lot of other people. And then uh, a sustained effort to reach out to the people, especially to the youths, to schools, colleges. Our responsibility was just to see that what we inherited, we protect, preserve and pass on to this future generation. Now the future generation has to take it on and, and go ahead and continue that and improve. We have, uh, daily we have uh, more resources available. So that has happened. People are now more aware. The number of heritage groups, the number of people you know, conducting heritage walks in the uh, in Hyderabad. Hardly any heritage walk used to be held, only infrequent ones in the uh, 25 years back. But now, every uh, other day you have uh, someone having a heritage walk in some part of the... I think there are 10 or 12 organizations now, groups now, who organize heritage walks. 
So uh, that I think is a major success. So we were able to reach out to the public and we were able to convince the people the, the importance of preserving and protecting our inherited cultural assets so that the future generation can uh, cherish them, can learn from them and these uh, monuments, streets, fadad, the buildings, the environment can serve as a marker for a, 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 of our identity, of our group identity. Heritage buildings, lakes, rocks, the case of Hyderabad exemplifies the uphill battle heritage conservation faces across India. How will this pan out? Only time will tell.